Today we're going to be using the A Touch of Ink stamp set. This set is from our Celebration mini catalog and it is free with a $100 purchase uh, from now until February 28th, 2021. And what I love about this set is it is a two-step stamp set, which means you can actually use it multiple ways. So it has this detail stamp that you can color in if you like to color. Or if you want a quick splash of color, you can use the second step to add that. And so you can color or you can just stamp and get color. And also has very uh, nice sentiments, best wishes, thank you so much, thinking of you, hello friend, hope and love. And so it's pretty versatile and it just is so springy and, and so sweet. This hummingbird is just adorable. And so let's get started. I've chosen to use a purple posy card base. And so I just cut a sheet of cardstock in half. So this measures four and a quarter by 11. And I scored it at the five and a half inch mark. So I'm just gonna fold there and burnish. And I wanna put some interest on here. So normally I might use an embossing folder, but another technique is to take um, an ink pad that is the same color as your base cardstock or one slightly darker. Now we don't have Purple Posy ink because there were manufacturing problems with it that just never got straightened out. And so I'm going to use Highland Header, which actually works very nicely with this. So I'm going to just ink my stamp up and I'm going to stamp all over this card front, moving my stamp around so that the flowers are going in all sorts of different directions. Now I happen to know that I've got uh, an oval that's going here, so I'm not too concerned with my stems going the same way there. And maybe a little bit more right here. Okay, uh, that's kind of blank right there, so I might, again, I've got something that's going right here, so I can cheat a bit and cover it up. So that is done. And I'm going to clean my stamp because I'm going to use this another way. I'm going to actually use it to color something in. So I decided that I wanted to put a layer on here and I chose a basic white oval that has been cut out with the stitched, uh, sorry, stitched shapes die. And I don't know if you can see, can you see the stitching around it? That little stitching adds so much to this shape. It really, really does. So I'm going to set the card aside for a second and I'm going to take Pear Pizzazz, which is a nice light green. And I'm going to ink up the bottom portion only of that stamp. Okay, so just the stem. And then I'm going to take Gorgeous Grape, which is one color intensity higher than the Highland Heather. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. So I'm gonna stamp that there. And I'm just going to put that right in the center of my oval. So there I have my flower. Now remember I said it was a two-stepper, so I could color in this flower if I wanted to but they actually give me um, a piece that I actually have to clean it off a little bit because it's not sticking because it got a little dirty. Okay, so they give you this piece right here and it's a distinctive stamp, which means that some of it's gonna stamp a little bit darker than the rest, and, uh, um, but it's really just there to add color to the background. So I'm going to line it up as best I can. Now with this stamp set, everything doesn't line up perfectly and that's all right because it's a watercolor look and watercolors often go outside the lines. So see, you can see that it didn't line up, but look how pretty that is. And I just love those colors. Those two purples together are so nice. So I need some dimensionals on the back of this because I'm going to pop it up because that's also another way to add interest to your card. And I'm going to set that aside for a second. Now I said this could be a, a coloring set as well. So I have a piece of scrap paper right here. Let me clean my stamp because I need to actually go ahead and 
put my hummingbird on it. Let's see, did I get my hummingbird out yet? No, I did not. So here's my hummingbird, the detail portion of him. Here he is. And I'm going to be coloring him with blends. So that means that I need to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This is the ink you need to use if you're using the blends because the blends are a, um, an alcohol-based ink. So if you use the stays on, you're just gonna get muddy colors. Everything's gonna be gray, even if you're not using gray. So I've got my hummingbird stamped and we can put that stamp away. I'm gonna need the stamp back for this flower a little bit later. So to color him, I'm going to actually, the blends come in pairs. So here's a light and a dark purple posy. I'm actually not gonna use the light. I really wish I had a gorgeous gray light um, or a Highland Heather light and dark to make this a little bit more intense, but I don't. So when I'm coloring, notice I'm coloring using the side. I'm, not, I'm going very gently. I, I don't wanna ruin my tip. It's just like a, a paintbrush tip. You want to treat it like it's super flexible, but you'd rather it keep its shape. So you treat it gently. So now I'm going to move to my smoky slate. This is a great color, by the way, to color those darling donkeys. But I want to color, and I always start with the dark because I blend out the dark. And so areas where there might be more shadow, like under his wings, and maybe under his belly, I'm going to put the dark and then I'm going to come in with the light and I'm kind of I'm actually coloring over the dark and that's going to blend in those lines a little bit so you don't get the sharp harsh lines that you do with the Stampin' Write markers which is why I hardly ever use those anymore. So I'm just going to blend and I do a little bit of a circular motion. It dries a little bit lighter Okay, and so you can see there's a little bit more definition or more shadowy area on the top of his head and at the bottom of his belly, which is what we want. We want him to make a little, look a little more 3D. So now I'm gonna take Bermuda Bay, which is such a beautiful color. Hey, hummingbirds come in all sorts of different colors. You can't probably pick wrong colors. If you Google them, you'll see lots of colors. So I'm gonna start again where I think the dark is going to be along the outsides, you know, wait, maybe underneath these wings where Stampin' Up's already colored for me. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more splotch in his wings, wing tips in just different places. Probably darker in there too, because that's a back wing. Okay, I'm gonna come in with a the light then, and I'm going to finish coloring and blend away any harsh lines that there are. These markers really make me feel like I know what I'm doing. I'm really, uh, I really have grown to love them. Uh, it didn't take a whole lot of time to grow to love them either. I felt like, oh, I had the light and the dark and oh, look, I'm, I'm shading like an artist. Fantastic. So I've got him colored. Now, one marker, Stampin' Blend, that you definitely want is the color lifter. It's not really an eraser. It's going to lift the color a little bit, make things lighter. So for instance, on the top of his head, I might see a little bit of um, a, a light spot where the light is hitting his head. So I put that there. Or maybe some more variation in um, his wings. Maybe I got a little bit too heavy in an area of his tail and I want to take some of it off. So you can see that I've taken some of the ink off here. You can see it probably better there where it's hitting the top of his head. Make you feel like an artist these pens do. And so now I need to cut that out, but so I don't waste your time. Look, I already have. So I'm going to put him on my card front. First thing I want to do though is put my flower down on my card front because I'm going to place the hummingbird like he's getting something to eat from the flower. Okay, so this is up on dimensionals. If I put his head up on dimensionals, 
then the rest of him sticks up above here. I kind of want him flat there, so I won't want a dimensional anywhere, like I won't want it on his head. So I'm going to bring in some of these mini dimensionals um, so I can get in a smaller area over here and on his tail. And I'll put another one on his body. Take those backings off. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to just put it right there. And so there he is getting a drink. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see. There you go. And the last thing I want to do is I need a piece. Oop, I'm out of it. I'm going to stamp a piece of Highland Heather cardstock. So I wanted something that was just a little bit deeper. So pardon me while I just take a second to, I think I cut it uh, 5 eighths of an inch wide. So I just cut a little strip here. And I'm going to take my gorgeous grape ink and stamp hope on my Highland Heather piece. Cut that off, and I'm going to flag this end. Flags are another way of just adding a little bit of interest. Like, oh, I took the time to do that. So now we're going to just take some stamp and seal and put it on the back and add my little hope here. Almost done. I thought, you know what would make this even nicer? Some bling. Now with the Stampin' Blends, you can actually color, use a marker to color on a clear rhinestone. It's like coloring with a Sharpie. It's really fantastic. However, I don't have a dark grape. So coloring with my Purple Posy, which is what I really want to do, um, is out of the question. But I was hoarding these, these Noble Peacock rhinestones, which probably two catalogs ago, uh, and I don't know why I hoarded them, but now, maybe now is the time because I can use them now on these beautiful cards. So I'm just going to put a couple of rhinestones and really you want to think in odd numbers. So there's one here and so three would make the odd, odd number and you want to make it so that they're kind of triangulated. And so there's the front of my card. Isn't that precious? So we just need to decorate the inside of the card now. So I'm going to go back to my gorgeous grape. I hope this cord is not, the cord from my microphone is not getting in my shot. It probably is. Sorry. I'm going to take this flower. I'm just going to, I didn't worry about the stem. I'm not even going to worry that it went off. Because, again, when I add in my second step, Things are going to go out of line anyways. So we just do our best to go over the top. And there we go. There's a little decoration on the inside. Perfect. And we'll just add some stamp and seal. And I've got plenty of space to write. I could write um, stamp another sentiment in here if I wanted to. I'd have to get it from another set. But there you go. A sweet, pretty simple card shows you that a two-step stamp set can actually be used to color. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this card. Go make something. Go create and make someone's day. Give them a little bit of hope in the form of a card.